Hallelujah Midweek Bible Study. Um, we're a little late tonight. We had some issues with uh, starting our new prayer time before church, and we had some other stuff happen right before church that we had to attend to that we weren't anticipating having to attend to. So that's got us running a little bit later, so we apologize. But we're here now and ready to dive in, hallelujah, for the um, 40 55% of an hour of power. <laughs> now, we'll, we'll go until we get done with it tonight's lesson, hallelujah. Uh, we've been teaching on the... Um, the Bible in the light of our redemption. And tonight we're on um, the law of the new creation. And we're talking about, you know, the past couple of weeks we've talked about um, uh, the lordship of Christ, what it means to us personally. Hallelujah. And uh, the law of the new creation. So now that we're born again, everybody say we're born again. Hallelujah. Christ is in us. Hallelujah. Isn't that good to know? Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, we need to take Christianity beyond I'm saved. Um, I am not sure, you know, sometimes I think, well, it's, it's, you know, using the word saved, it, it does, it is in the Greek, it's, it, it's born out in the Greek, but it also means healed and all the other stuff. But sometimes I think in our vernacular, we, we lose sight of the other things that it entails and what being saved means. You know, because, you know, you see the signs of the churches. Jesus saves from a burning hell. Okay? And so our, our largest concept and theological construct of being saved means you're not going to hell. And you're going to heaven. Okay? And um, true. Absolute truth on both ends. You're not going to hell. You're going to heaven. Praise God. But I think we leave out in that construct, in, in the church in general, they um what it means to be a new creation and what laws work in the life of the of the new creation the new testament believer it, we, we are saved from going to hell you know we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his dear son all right praise the lord yes we were snatched out of uh, out of the uh stranglehold of hell in the kingdom of darkness and we were translated into the kingdom of, of, of the son of his love, into the kingdom of light. <clears throat> and too often we leave it there and we figure, just figure out how you're going to live until Jesus gets here or until you go home. <clears throat> but there is the new creation. And that new creation lives by law. Amen. There is a new, there is a law. There is the main primary law of the new creation. Anybody know what it is? Somebody come on. Y'all got to think now. Y'all 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 are well schooled. What would be the law of the new creation? Love. It's the law of love. <clears throat> okay? Now, having Jesus as our Lord tells us that sin, sickness, uh, disease, Satan, no longer has right to rule over us. Amen. Um, they're no longer a problem. They don't have any more authority over us. How do, you know, amen. Um, but the church is focused on sin, which, and, and, there, and listen, I'm not saying you shouldn't ever. Jesus talked about sin. Jesus talked about hell. But in, in, in address, you know, when you address a believer every week that they're a sinner saved by grace and you're a dirty dog and you're sinning a little every day and all that stuff, um, you know, uh, that creates a problem. Does it not? So we want, we want to move beyond uh, that, past the sin problem, and into the how we live pro uh, situation or how we, how we live construct of new creation theological um, activity for the believer. Okay. The Bible teaches us that the sin problem has been settled. He said, obtain an eternal redemption for us. Sin shall not lord it over you. Amen. Hallelujah. And, um, when we, and, and not only that, Hebrews tells us that the blood of Jesus uh, cleanses us from even the very consciousness, the conscientiousness of sin. 
if the blood of bulls and goats and the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, who offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Something that was never done under the Old Testament. Okay, something that mankind had not known since the fall of Adam is the freedom from the conscientiousness of sin. Amen. And then, of course, the devil sold a bill of goods to the church. We come in and we go, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Well, I was an old sinner and I was saved by grace, but now I'm a new creature. So I'm not going to magnify what I was. I want to magnify what I am and who I am. Amen? Okay. All right. Um, we would not be able to enter into the very heavenly holy of holies and worship God as New Testament believers without this cleansing of the consciousness. Hallelujah. Um, remember, the Bible tells us the sacrifices of the old covenant could not perfect them that offer them. Even the high priest wasn't perfected by that. Okay? So, we've missed the real issue. A mind ruled by sin consciousness, the church has failed to have the mind of Christ. Remember the Bible says that, um, that Jesus, let this same mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Okay? Who being equal with God thought it not robbery um, I mean, uh, what was that scripture and how's it stated? I just, I just, I just mutilated it. Okay. Uh, Hebrews, I mean, Philippians 2, 5 and 6. Having this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God, counted not the being on inequality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, took the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, yea, even the death of the cross. So he, remember, he took our place so that we could live in perfect fellowship and harmony with God. In the, now, being born again and delivered from the conscientiousness of sin. The Bible tells us to be of the same mind as Christ. So we see Jesus in his ministry operating under the law of love. Now, the law of love does not excuse sin. You know? Okay, you know, the Bible doesn't teach that, you know, Jesus said, go, go sin some more because you're under grace. He said, go and sin no more. lest the worst thing come on you. You know, he did tell the woman that, where are your accusers? I don't condemn you. But he also told people, told, said, don't, he said, go, go and sin no more. Amen. So, you know, his law of love was not the law of condemnation or, or I got gotcha. you. It was to restore and heal and, 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 and set free. Amen. So Jesus, being the epitome of love and love in action, amen, hello, M his ministry was a ministry of love. Um, God delivered us completely from sin, from weakness, disease, circumstances, anything, the works of the devil. Remember that? For this purpose was the Son of God manifest to destroy, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay? And also the, uh, the, the, uh, the him that had the power of death. He took the keys of death and hell. The mind of Christ was the love attitude. Love is the revelation of his life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen? You know, the, one of the major themes of 1 John is God is love. The ministry of Jesus is a ministry of love. Amen. One first John three sixteen declares, Hereby we know we love no no love, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Now, doesn't mean we can die for them. Does that make sense? But to lay down our life, to put others first, to um it's not about oh, I'm a I'm a believer now, and everything's about me and what I can get. And, and this is the problem with some of our teaching on prosperity and stuff is we took it to such a level that it all, it's all that came out of us. And we forgot everything else. We forgot about serving God. 
we forgot about the kingdom of God. We, forgot, we just forgot a bunch of stuff, okay? And we didn't care about our brother and our sister or the hurting, you know? As long as I had my car and my house and I could confess my things, I was cool. That's not the law of love, okay? So that's not the law of love. We have to be. There, there was a, you know, if the devil can't keep you out of something, he'll try to push you too far in it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? He'll, he'll, you know, if he can't keep you out of the word of faith and believing God and to speak in the word and living by faith, he'll push you into arrogance. Hello? I'll never, I'll never forget. And I'm not trying to be, you know, like, I don't want you holding the grudge. No, I'll just never forget the arrogance of it. Our church wanted to bring in a well, well-known minister, pastor of the church, very well-known, our church in Greenville. Um, <clears throat> we had gotten to the size of that church that we could have anybody, anybody in the country we wouldn't have come in could come in. And a lot of them did, okay? Um, and uh, they called this particular, we were calling this particular, and our secretary called and, you know, sent and, and call and call two weeks call. And um, finally got somebody at the ministry. And said, well, you know, our, our, our pastor wanted to uh, inquire about having brother so-and-so come and minister at our church, yada, yada, yada. And um, the lady said something like, yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, they're not, the, the person that takes care of that's not here right now. And the secretary went, well, I've been calling for two weeks. I haven't been able to get anybody. And the woman answered this way, well, you're just going to have to use your faith. Well, see, that's not love. That's not preferring somebody else. That's arrogance. I've got faith. I use my faith to get what I need. Tough on you if you can. That's, that's the, the arrogance in that. And it becomes a nauseating reproach on the church because then people don't want anything to do with that you know remember we used to sing that song we'll know each, we'll know they're christians by our love by our love you know we are one in the family we are one in the lord uh, i forget how i forget all the words now uh, when i try to sing it i do better but then you have to hear me sing and that's not better um praise the lord jesus existed in the form of god all that god was all that god is the very image of a substance, he thought as God thought, lived as God lived, loved as God lived. And he was so utterly one with God, he said, he who's seen me has seen the Father. Okay? He's, what he was really saying is this. Let's, let's kind of take what, you know, Kenyon says, um, his paraphrase this. Philip, during the three years that you've been with me, you've seen the Father, the very substance of his nature. In my actions, you've seen the Father's actions. In my words, you've heard the Father's words. In me, you have seen the Father, for we are one. Hallelujah. He existed in the form of God. Everything that the word God meant, he, he was. He lived on an absolute equality with him. And by our minds, can't hardly even exact, grasp the, the, um, the breadth of the meaning of the word God. You know? Um, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. I mean... We get, you know, we get conceptually, we start thinking, really trying to think about God, we start kind of going tilt at the vastness and the glory and the majesty of God. How can he be outside of all of this and be the creator and still come live in us? Hallelujah. Okay? So. The universe contains all the personal beings who feel, think, suffer, choose, and determine. We know that the, crea the creator of personal beings must be as personal. An impersonal, inanimate object could not create personal beings. Hello? No matter how far they go with artificial intelligence, it's still not personal. It's not real. It's why I call AI, artificial intelligence. Okay? It does. It doesn't literally think for itself. Everything that it comes up with has been programmed into it 
with a um, algorithm of decision making on the process uh, the process for what decision to make about what it was created that way okay it doesn't take on its own intelligentsia where it thinks outside the box it's been programmed into it and some people do a bad job ask Siri because she'll she'll tick you off about half the time I, I get I get tired of telling Siri she's stupid that's not nice you know Siri you're an idiot that's not nice <laughs> okay but he in, in all that God is and was, he humbled himself in the incarnation. So to come and to walk among us as a man made flesh, die the death on the cross to redeem his creation from eternal damnation and destruction. Only love could do that. Only love could do that. For no other reason. There's no other reason in the universe it could have been done other than love. Okay. The divine suffering caused by Christ becoming sin is unique. There is no analogy. There's nothing to compare it to. We can't measure it by anything we've ever known. Him, the divine, the creator, suffering for the rebellion of his creation in order to purchase them back from the self-inflicted separation from the Father. Because uh, Kenya also has written a book, you know, back when he was, he was still alive. Um, the name of that book is The Father and His Family. It is a love father loving his love creation to the extent he would die to deliver them from their destruction. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So why did he do it? The answer is because, and why did Jesus come? Because he's the son of God. He is love. Okay? God is love. Here, here, the henceforth, Jesus is love. And even the Commodores got that right. Flip side of heroes. If you ever got, if you got the heroes uh, LP back in, I think it may, may have been one of the last albums Lionel Richie did with them, um, the Commodores. But on the flip side, there's a song called "Jesus Is Love," and it is a, it's a, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a good song. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's like Lionel grew up in church and he, he reached in and got all that out. <laughs> you know, he's, he heal your body and all that. I mean, he's, it's a good one. <clears throat> uh, not too long ago, I pulled it up and listened. I said, because I, I had the album. And I remember getting the album and then, you know, well, you know, I was, I was a, a good little unsaved Pentecostal boy who, you know, you sing something Christian, you go, well, that's, that's cool, you know. And I play that song, I'm like, man, that's really good, <laughs> you know. Um, Romans 5, 6, and 8 says, for while we were yet weak in due season, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. For peradventure, for the good man, some would even dare to die. But Christ condemned his own love, uh, commendeth his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Even when you were dead in your trespasses and sins, he's quickened us together. Amen. Romans 15, 3, for Christ also pleased not himself, but as it is written, for the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell upon thee, me. The reproaches of man who had reproached God. And baby, I'm going to tell you, what we see right now in the world, ain't, ain't, we ain't seen anything like this since God, Sodom and Gomorrah. I was thinking about this afternoon, you know, how, how, how much debauchery and loss of morality we have. Uh, even in music, we get the, the group this year that won a Grammy 
was a group you can't even say their name publicly. It's so filthy. I mean, it's just, it's a sexual, filthy connotation is their name. They have to use letters because they can't say it. And the song was filthy. And they, and they rewarded them with a Grammy. And then parents are letting their kids listen to that trash. An absolute moral debauchery. Y'all know what I'm talking about? What do, yeah, okay. I'm not going to fill it out here. Young people go, what's wrong with that? Are you, are you that far gone? I'm going to start calling you craftsmen. Ratchet. <laughs> that's, the new that's, the, that's the newer term for um, who? It's ratchet. Okay? So, I, so well, you know, people, say, people know what you say when you say ratchet, so I now call them craftsmen. <laughs> craftsman tools, ratchet. <laughs> yeah. Some people might, may not get it, so that's why I say it. Yeah, that's just pure, that's pure craftsman over there. They might think, well, he's talking about that they're really, no, I'm talking ratchets. <laughs> oh, my. Um, but the reproaches of humanity that reproached against God, Jesus came to take. I mean, we've seen stuff, activity in our, in our school restrooms. Of all of the places. I know what Brown would, would say. Medea, that's just, oh no, Medea would say, Brown, that's just nasty. <laughs> that, that's just nasty. I mean, it's, it's, it's phenomenal how bad it is. But see, as the light gets lighter, and the darkness gets darker, as the return of Christ comes. But you see, our job gets bigger. We've got to reach out to people in love and reach them. Because they're captured in a system that encourages the debauchery, celebrates the debauchery, rebels and tarnishes and destroys any moral authority voice that doesn't agree with their debauchery. And we have, to re we have to respond in love. We can't be calling fire down and opening up the earth and swallowing them. Sorry, Jerry. I, I don't know if I just messed up half your prayer life or not, but. <laughs> Shall we call fire down out of heaven? Ye know not what spirit you're of. <laughs> Sons of thunder. Okay. We have to reach out. We are the last hope they have. There's nothing else. There is no, there is no drug. There is no drink. There is no substance. There is no activity that can, that satisfies and deliver the bondage that they're held captive in. We, the church, not only their last, we are their only hope. And we, out of the pure, absolute love of God, have to reach people so they can be set free. Because if our voices become silenced, or our voices become that of, you know, um, judgment and condemnation. Listen, I'm not saying we, we, we you, you've heard me say it's debauchery, it's immoral. But if our voices do not have love that says you can be free, you can be liberated. You can come out from that, that darkness. If our voices don't have that, whose will? Now, we got school teachers now teaching, you know, uh, third graders about it's okay to transition to a boy or a girl. And don't tell your parents, we're now calling you she. Billy, we're going to start calling you uh, Brenda at school. But don't tell your mom and dad. Parents are being left out of the loop. Okay? And I personally believe that there is a spirit on intelligentsia of perversion. There's an absolute perverse spirit on intelligentsia. Now, not all smart people are perverts. 
But I'm saying there is a spirit that comes on intelligentsia who denies, and I think they're all, and I think those people, and they're in, they're in deeply embedded in, in, in prominent positions. I think there are a bunch of perverts out there sent as emissaries of the devil to capture the mind of children and bring them into captivity to darkness because Satan, listen, they don't love kids. Satan doesn't love children. He's gone around and killed children just trying to get to Jesus. Every two-year-old in the land. Um, they tried to get to Moses. Every two-year-old in the land. Tried to get to Jesus. Every two-year-old in the land. Okay? So that spirit does not care about children. All right? It hates them. <clears throat> and if it can't kill them off, it wants to get them so so indoctrinated and so messed up in their head that there's only one group of people who can deliver them, and we cannot do it unless we're full of love. We have to be full of the love of God. Now, how does it mean? Listen, it doesn't mean we look at stuff and go, that's horrible, and I don't agree with that, and I'm not going to agree with it, and I'm not going to go out and get me a, a pride flag and fly it. Sorry. I had, I had some students come to me a, a couple of years ago, three years ago, when I would sign their uh, flag at, at, during the week, during the week. I said, no. You know, they, they're going around getting teachers to put ally on their door in the rainbow colors and safe place in rainbow colors. Say, Mr. Taylor, will you come? Uh, nope. Why not? I said, let me say this. I love you. But I will not condone that which I know is wrong and I believe is wrong. Now, I can completely disagree with you and still love you. But I will not. I will not sign this. I won't do it. Next day, all over the school, Mr. Taylor's a homophobe. He's a homophobe. So I went to the AP. I said, "You better do something about this." I said, "Now, I'm not going to have my character just uh, um, um, not, not assassinated, but you know, impugned." My character impugned over this. I said, I didn't say I hated. I said, as a matter of fact, I told the person I loved them. I said, but I told them I cannot sign something I, vehement, I disagree with and believe is sin and wrong. So they went to the teacher who was behind all of this. Told them, call off the dogs. So that, you know, I said, you know, listen. You are not going to impugn my character with this junk. I told him, I love you, but I want to see you set free. I don't want you to see you bound by some pervert spirit that's, that's driving you to think something about yourself that's not in the image of God. It's a satanic image of you. It's a distorted image of who you are. Out of the creator's image of you. Hello? Hello? The spirit behind it, but I still love them. I don't. I don't. I, he, I know you know who people are. I don't go treat them bad. I don't walk up to them and go, "You, you," and use the uh, British cigarette word. Some of y'all thinking, "What is that?" It starts with F. That's what you call a cigarette in England. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Why did, I don't know why they call it that, but that's what they've called it all this time. You know, actually, well, the short, but in, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave it there, okay? We still love people. The answer, the answer has to be that we love people. No, I'm not a homophobe. You are heterophobe. <laughs> You're heterophobic. You're afraid of normality. If I don't, if I don't agree with you, I'm a homo. No, I'm not. I'm not afraid of you. I don't fear you. I don't have a phobia about you and your lifestyle. I'm not scared of it. I do know that it's demonic. 
it will destroy your life and you will live depressed and die defeated and go to hell. Therefore, I cannot condone it or support it or encourage it or embellish it or talk about love as if that's normal. Okay? But I have, I do love the people. Okay? Um, when the issue that the new creation faces is the problem that Christ faced. The man who became a new creation in Christ faces the need of a spirit. Uh, faces the need of spiritually dead man. It is not given to him to die for them as he did Christ, but his place is, a, is essential as Christ. Unto the, un, un, unto the new creation is given the message, the message of redemption to be given to humanity. Remember 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 5? He hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus came to provide in the means of reconciliation. We've been given the message of reconciliation. What is that message? Be ye reconciled to God. That's what he says there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Be ye reconciled to God. Okay? But all things are of God who reconciled unto himself. That's 2 Corinthians chapter, or 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. Uh, but all things are of God who reconciled un, un, us unto himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ Reconciling the world unto himself, not reckoning unto them their trespasses, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We are there, we are ambassadors, therefore, on behalf of Christ. So we, in order to carry this message of love, we have to walk out the way that Jesus walked. We have to walk in that love walk. We have to be, we don't go preach people get saved so that we can, you know, be angry at them and, you know, and all this stuff. We have to get to people because we love them and don't want to see them go to hell. There's a community of people out here. This county, I mean, a 30-mile radius of Greensboro has 2 million people. Going to downtown Greensboro and go out uh, 30, uh, I think, um, like 30 miles and go around the city and there's two, over 2 million people in that radius. Right here. 2 million. I mean, Greensboro City proper is a, is a, a little over 200,000 within the city limits. High Point's about, it's, it's pushing 80 to 90,000 now. Winston-Salem is about 190,000. So we're talking between the three, the three cities. We're almost half a million right there <coughs> within the city limits. And then all the, all the places outside of that. You know, Burlington gets within that 30-mile radius. You know, Clemens, okay? You start, you start getting out, you know, going down into Thomasville, into um, almost to Randleman, okay? You start getting in that circle, you get 32 million people. And folks, there is there, there is stuff going on with those two million people. They need Jesus. Who's going to take Jesus to them? One point two million unsaved, unchurched. That's a whole lot of people. Are you here? And they're going about their business. And they're being fed things from the world. And they're being, you know, listen, I know politics. I, it, it, it'll, it'll stir you up. And, I'll, and, and, and Satan's baiting the church with race politics. You're being baited, church. If you're all into this, you know, uh, stuff and somebody owes you because of this, Jesus delivered you from this if you're born again your ancestors were not slaveholders or slave slaves because you're a new creature in christ old things passed away all things became new and all things are of god and your failure to succeed today cannot be blamed 
on what happened to great, 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 great uncle Charlie down on Ed Taylor's great, great, great uncle Leroy's farm. So the church has bought into the hate and, and spewing all this stuff and fighting over this instead of being the solution that people need of love and reaching people in love and sharing the gospel with people and tell them, you can get 40 acres and a mule and it ain't going to fix your problems. We can go back and what they promised, you know, when they campaigned, you know, back back in the day, we could get everybody would get 40 acres and a mule. You know, we even had Spike Lee's 40 acres and a mule uh, film company and pushing all this stuff. We can go get you your 40 acres and a mule and it's not going to fix your problem. Because what's going on now is that it's, it's culturally in, in invested in the cultures of white, black, in between, Latino, whatever. This it's invested, and Satan is using it to drive people away from each other. And it's gotten into the church where now the church can't stand up and be the voice of reconciliation. And I don't mean reconciliation about, well, we need to have reparations. Do you know who can give you your reparations? Jesus. There's not enough money in the government to fix it. You can't tax it. You can't print it. You can't fix it. There's not a human answer, which is setting the stage for the Antichrist because people will believe he does have the answer. They'll follow the Antichrist because they'll believe he has the answer to world peace and world justice and world equity and all this stuff. And the church is going to be sitting there with Ichabod written on their doors. And if you don't know what that means, that means the Spirit of God has departed. Um, one of, um, I can't remember whose mother, if, if it was um, Eli's wife or whatever, but um, she had a child, and it was out of her sorrow of losing her other children, and she said she named it Ichabod. The glory of God, or the spirit of God, the glory of God has departed. And it's departing off of our churches because we're not walking in love. I am not your white brother, and you are not my black brother. You are my brother, or you are my sister in the Lord. That's, that, that's, that's it. Now, to the white brethren, there ain't, well, ain't none. For in Christ Jesus, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female. Amen? And then Paul writes, talks about, he, the, the three races, the Jew, the Greek, and the church of God. The natural lineage of Abraham, the unsaved people, and then those who are the spiritual lineage of Abraham. That's it. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. What's he saying? There's no races. Not in the kingdom of God. So church, if we got to get our act together. Church, out there, in here. That's why I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do anything a couple years ago after the George Floyd. That's not the answer. Me getting up and getting involved in all this political stuff about that is not the answer. Me trying to make some, you know, repentive, you know, whatever for what white folk did 200 years ago is not the answer. It, that's, it won't change a thing. It won't fix a thing. It won't bring healing one bit. Because your heart's just as messed up as the other guy's. So church, we got to quit playing, being tools of the devil to rob of us of our one tool that can reach people, the love of God. The love of God. So when I come to someone, I don't go, well, I'm trying to get this black guy saved. White folks don't know nothing about the move of the Holy Ghost. 
had somebody do that during church, in our church. We, when, I was, when I first got out of Rama, came back, we were in a business, in, in a building, and one of our East Carolina students, her mama came to visit the church, and she got up, took her the microphone, and started going off. And then finally she said, and white people don't know nothing about praising God. Came up and slapped me all over the face. <laughs> Lady, I hadn't been saved that long. <laughs> I felt like Chief Inspector Dreyfus at the, and with uh, uh, Inspector Clouseau nearby. <laughs> like, I, I just ain't been saved that long. I've been to Rainbow. They're still working. God's still working on me. <laughs> I needed Lamaze classes right then. <clears throat> this is the kind of stuff. And so if we don't get our act together and get the mind of Christ, <coughs> and what it, now, well, Jesus told the, uh, told the woman um, with the daughter vexed with, you know, um, with that was a Syrophoenician woman, that um, it wasn't me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. He was, using a, he was using covenant terminology. See, the Jews had a right to the healing. She didn't. They were, they were, they were societal half-castes. They were, they, were, they were mixed race. They weren't a pure lineage of Abraham. They didn't have the right to the covenant. So how was she going to get it? He had to get her to, he had to locate her. Because he wanted to get it to her. But he had, to, he had to get a way to do it that wasn't based on the law. Because she didn't qualify. So she looked down and said, yes, Lord. But even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Great is your faith. Be it unto you, even as you will. See, so he located her, got her, in the, got her to declare her faith, and he could act on it. See, it wasn't he was being... Racist. It was we were. It was under the old covenant. His ministry was an old covenant ministry. She did not have covenant rights. God did not have a covenant with her. But she stepped over and got a hold of it by faith, and she got it. He just needed to get her that, to, to declare it, so he could work with it. Amen. <clears throat> so even in his love, he didn't want to say, "You, you, Syrophoenician dog, we don't have nothing to do with you," and walk off. He said it's not, it's not right. Really what he was saying is it's not legal to take the children's bread, covenant blessings, and give it to the dogs, the outcasts, those who are not in covenant. And she says, yeah, but even a dog get a crumb. And all I need is a crumb. <laughs> he said, your faith is great. Take it. Yeah. Go with it, girl. <laughs> I can work with faith like that. Yeah. Amen. See? So the mind of Christ is the mind of love. It is, it is an action in love. Amen? And we have to, we have to walk in love. We cannot continue um, not acting in love and expect God to work in the church. Oh, we, we wear our skinny jeans, and we have our, our you know, light shows and fog machines and, you know, um, three-hour worship of really rock and cool worship, man. Groovy. I'm expecting to hear the millennials are the next generation, Generation Z or whatever they are now. Some other, you know, double Z or something. I'm not sure what they are. Do you know what they are now, Jesse? Let me say something. That's all garbage. It's all saying, you got to change and water down the message to reach this generation. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. You don't want to water down the power. You want it to zip them and zap them. I mean, you want to... Their life with the gospel. Hello. Praise the Lord. Here's Paul talking. He has that mind of Christ in him. Amen. Um, 
Love's testimony is this. I will most gladly spend and be spent for your soul. 2 Corinthians 12, 15. Paul even wrote one place, I would, I, I, I'm going to paraphrase it. I'll give up my salvation if it would save the Jews. Knowing what that meant, he said, I would give up my salvation if it would save my, Jew, my, my brethren, the Jews. That's heavy. I'm looking at y'all going, that, that's heavy, Pastor. But see, he had the mind of Christ. Now, I got, you, you kind of got to think back in the back of his mind, he knows that he couldn't. But his heart, his heart was so, I want them saved so much, I'll give up mine if they would get saved, if it would get them saved. You've come to know the love of God. You understand the heart of the Father. If you say that and mean it, you've come to full understanding of the heart of the Father. Nikki Cruz and David Wilkerson. David was ministering to Nikki Cruz. Nick, Nikki Cruz was a, a gangbanger in New York back in the day. And they weren't any different than gangbangers today. They'd cut you with a switchblade. They didn't have guns. They, they used switchblades and stuff. They, they would kill people. They still kill people. I mean, you take all the guns in the world away you want to, they're going to they get a knife. Remember when they took all the guns in England? What happened? They started killing people with knives. No, wait, we don't talk about that. Ban assault kitchen knives. We don't have that, do we? You know, uh, Jesse had um, a college classmate. Is that, was it you? The girl that was mowed down with the car. College, she, she went to High Point University with. The girl was mowed down by a gar, guy in a car. Had her baby and her child with her. Pregnant. He killed all of them. Just rammed them at like 90 miles an hour into a building. On purpose. Do we ban assault vehicles? Cars? We're going to do background checks before you own a motor vehicle. You see, evil is evil. Okay? I said evil is evil. The church has to learn to combat the things of this world with the love of God. Because evil's out there. And it's running rampant. And it's running an absolute... Uh, and now we got a government that supports it if it, it meets their narrative politically. Let's face it. If it burns cities down, it's okay. Because it keeps it going. Going to the Capitol building? Oh, we got to put fences up. We've got terrorists out there. Kept the National Guard there for like a year. Maybe still have the fences up, you know, because you can't have this. Burnt down cities all over the country. Had one Portland, Oregon had the city blocked off by Antifa where nobody could come in. They had possession of it and declared it an independent country. And everybody sat back and watched it and didn't do a thing about it. This is the anarchy that's going on out there. So the question is who's going to reach them? Your political, and if you join their political persuasion, it's not going to fix it. If you give up your car, it's not going to fix it. If you go off the grid and get rid of all electricity and all guns and all that stuff, it's not going to fix it. Hello? Who do you think put the oil and the coal and the natural gas in the earth in the first place? It was not the dinosaurs. Just so you know, they did not start the theory of fossil fuels until the late 1920s. Late, late 1800s, early, late, but I think around 1920 or so is when they started declaring it was fossil fuels. Uh-huh. And Sinclair Gas came up with the dinosaurs, its logo, and all, Dino the dinosaur, you know. Or Dino was, was Flintstones, right? Okay. But they, they had a name for that dinosaur. That was, you know, because it's fossil fuels. And we have fed that narrative now. For you know, a hundred years, there's fossil fuels. All the 
You mean all the dinosaurs got one spot and died? Because I mean, I thought they roamed the whole earth. Why? Why only got pockets of huge reserves? They all moved to one spot and died there. Well, well, you can really work on some stupidity, can't you? Okay. God fills us with. I'm sorry, Ephesians three sixteen. That He would grant to you. I better back up. I'm, I'm jumping. I'll gladly be spent, spent, be spent, and be spent for your sake. Um, the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3, that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory that you be strengthened with power, with his spirit in the inward man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith to the end, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able or may be strong to apprehend. What? was the pre-qualifier to being able to grasp or understand or apprehend what? With all the saints, what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. <coughs> what? Hallelujah. His love has been shed abroad in your heart. He's filled with your power so you can understand his love. He uses his power and his might to bring you to a place so you can understand his love. Hallelujah. Love bears the weaknesses of the weak. Christ did not please himself, but he took his sin. Remember? Never, my, uh, is there any other way? Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. Okay? Love is to have the mind of Christ. The new man in Christ, taking Christ's place, has a debt of love to pay to humanity. Owe no man anything other than uh, say to love one another. That does not mean you can't borrow money. We have people teach that and have for years. Owe no man nothing but to love one another. I can't borrow money, you know. And you're walking to and from work because you can't borrow money to buy a car because that's. Hello. That's not what the scripture is trying to talk about here, folks. Okay? Is we have a debt of love to humanity because Christ paid our debt with his love. So now we're indebted to humanity to love them. That's what he's talking about. Not don't borrow money. That got mighty quiet. I know one of your favorite preachers says it. Hello. I love him. I disagree with that. I, just like I disagree with the person who says, fake it till you make it. I don't buy that. Oh, so you're going to teach Christians to be hypocrites. We don't fake it till we make it. We spend time with God and we get close to God and, and we pray and we seek him and we get into his word until we understand and then walk in the light of it. I'm not faking it till I make it. Go ahead and teach you people to be imposters. But see how charismatics love little, you know, cliche cool sayings. We got to be a little bit deeper than a cliche. Janice, I need an amen. Okay. You want me to read all the answers now, or would you rather me um, have them printed up and give them to you next week? Who wants some bread now? Unanimous decision. Pastor, we've been here since 6.15 doing the prayer thing and everything. Yeah, and we, you know, so, all right, praise the Lord. Did y'all get anything out of that? All right. Now, don't forget. Uh, now, we could use some help around here on Friday afternoon. We're going to be doing some setting up. We're having a memorial service for Linda. You, you can go ahead and, yeah, let's go ahead. And, 
Let's go ahead. Love y'all. God bless you. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. See you next time here at Expedition Church uh, of the Triad.